Now that we've seen how local variables are stored, in this video, we're going to look at how functions get called and arguments get passed into parameters. The example code I'm going to use for this video counts the number of prime numbers between two values. It does this using two functions, primes between, which does the counting, and is prime, which returns one if a given number is prime. So our main method calls prime between, passing in two integers. Primes between calls is prime and counts the number of times it returns a one. When we call a function, the machine needs to pass arguments into any parameters, make space for local variables, and remember where we were when we made the call so that we can return when the function finishes. And it has to do all of that without messing up the data that is used by the calling function. So each function needs its own space. We call the memory space that a function uses its frame. Among other things, that frame holds the function's local variables. We store the frames in a stack. And yes, it's just like a stack of dishes. When we make a new one, it goes on the top of the stack. And when we're finished with it, it comes off the top of the stack. To see how the stack works, let's start with our program running in the main function. That function gets a stack frame, which holds its local variables. The stack is just a space in memory, but we need to keep track of where it is. For that, we'll use two registers, the stack pointer, which always contains the address at the top of the stack, and the base pointer, which always contains the address that is the bottom of the stack frame at the top of the stack. When main calls primes between, the stack frame for that function gets built on the top of the stack, and our two registers get updated to reflect the fact that the stack has grown. Remember that primes between calls another function named isPrime. Again, that will cause a new stack frame to be added to the top of the stack. When isPrime returns, we'll jump back into primes between and discard the frame that is on the top of the stack. Essentially, that restores the state of the stack back to how it was when primes between called isPrime, so everything is ready for primes between to continue running. Let's look at that calling sequence again, adding in some more details. As you watch this, remember that the details of the order that things go on the stack is very machine and compiler specific. Right now, we're just trying to see what has to happen, not exactly what happens on any given machine. We start in the main method, and there is one stack frame that holds main's local variables. The stack pointer and the base pointer hold the bottom and the top addresses of that frame. When main wants to call primes between, passing 42 and 96 into the parameters, it puts the 42 and the 96 on the top of the stack frame. The call on primes between needs to remember where the call was made so that we can return later. So it puts the address of the instruction we should return to onto the stack. Then, in order to be able to go back to the main stack frame, it puts a copy of the base pointer onto the stack. Then, to make the stack frame for primes between, it copies the current stack pointer into the base pointer and moves the stack pointer far enough to make space for prime between's local variables. When primes between wants to call is prime passing a 42 into x, it puts the 42 on the stack. Then the call stores the address of the return instruction and a copy of the base pointer onto the stack. Then it copies the stack pointer into the base pointer and moves the stack pointer to make room for isPrime's local variables. Remember, we put all this stuff on the stack for two reasons, to give each function its own place for its local variables, and to be able to return when a function is finished. Let's watch how that return happens. When isPrime returns, we copy the value of the base pointer into the stack pointer. Then we copy the saved base pointer into the base pointer, and then we jump to the instruction whose address we save during the call. All of that has the effect of removing the top stack frame and making things look like they were before that function was called. Now let's watch this in CLion to see it for real. I'm going to show you the call stack on Windows running the compiler for Ubuntu for Windows. If you're running in a different operating system or using a different version of the compiler, things might be, not be in exactly the same places, but this should be enough to help you find things. Here is our code. Notice that in each function, I've initialized the local variables with unique values. 
I did that to make it easier to find them in the stack. I've put a breakpoint in each function right after the local variable gets initialized. These will let us see each stack frame as they get built. So let's run it in the debugger. Here, it has stopped at a breakpoint in main. You can see our local variables here. CLAN also shows us the call stack. Right now, only the main function is running. Let's look at the registers to find the stack pointer and the base pointer. I'll copy the stack pointer and remember the values for the stack pointer and the base pointer. Those addresses bound the stack frame for main. Let's remember one more thing from the registers. The address of the current instruction is held in the instruction pointer register. That won't be exactly where we return to, but it'll be close. So knowing that will help us find the return address that will go in the primes betweens stack frame. Now, I use the stack pointer to dump the memory starting at that address. Using the addresses in the stack pointer and the base pointer, we know that the main stack frame is here. Our local variables have the values 42 and 96, which are 2a and 60 in hex, and we can find them in the stack frame here. Now that we've seen that stack frame, let's let the code run up to the point where primes between has set up its local variables. Again, we can see the local variables here and the call stack here. Now you can see that both main and primes between are on the call stack. When we look at the registers, RSP and RBP have changed. So I'll remember their values and the value of RIP at this point. Now, looking at memory, starting at the address from the stack pointer, we can use RSP and RBP to find the stack frame for primes between. In that frame, we can find three things. First, I put hex values into the local variables, so you can find them here. Second, we know that it was supposed to hold the old value of the base pointer. We can see the main's base pointer value here. Third, it was supposed to record the address that it should jump back to. That should be a value close to the instruction pointer value we saw in main, so that's here. From there, we can use the old BP value to mark the bottom of main's frame, so main's frame is here. The last thing main did before it made the call was to put the two parameters, 42 and 96, onto the stack. You can see them here. So when the code for primes between is looking for the parameter variables, it will look for them below the value in BP, and its local var variables will be above the value in BP. Now let's let the code run to the point where primes between has called is prime, and is prime has put the hex 2345 into its local variable div. As usual, you can see the local variables and the call stack. Notice that we can click on any frame in the call stack, and the local variables of that frame will be displayed. Let's look at the registers and record the new values for RSP and RBP. After we dump the memory, Pause the video, maybe take a screenshot, and then try and find the three stack frames, all of the local variables, and all of the parameters on your own. Here's how I decode the stack. In this video, we saw how call-by-value parameters are passed. 